All right, guys, today we are going to do part one of our AC video series. This one is going to focus on how AC works. So let's get into it. So this is going to be a multi-part video series. So today we're going to go over, uh, I'm not an artist, but I'm going to draw out an AC system. Uh, we're going to go over how does an AC system actually function? What does it do? Okay. I'm a firm believer that if you know how something works, you can fix it. Okay. We don't want to be guessing on how something works. So I'm going to give you just a very basics today on how an AC system works. Now there's going to be a lot of guys that are watching this. I know there's going to be some, you know, uh, thermodynamic engineers out there and there's going to be chemical engineers out there and all kinds. Of, I know that you guys go way deeper into it. Uh, and, and I appreciate that. And you can definitely leave some comments down below on, on some things that you, that you feel are important. I'm looking at it from a standpoint of a mechanic, of a technician. What do we need to know to fix a vehicle, to diagnose it and fix it and make sure it's right, okay? And not go down a rabbit hole. So we're gonna, get, we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna go over just the basic theory of operation and how it works, all right? So let's start off. We all know that an AC system, we're gonna have the compressor. So the engine of the AC system. So let me go ahead and put that right here. All right, so here's our compressor. Here's our belt, okay? And then we're gonna have lines coming out of the AC compressor. So what are the lines gonna be coming out of the AC compressor? Well, you know what, before I do that, let me draw the other components before I draw lines. Let's go with the condenser. So we're gonna have a condenser, okay? We're going to have lines going to that, and then we're going to have some type of cooling fan that's going to be cooling that off, okay? Whether it be electric uh, or mechanical fan, okay? We're going to have an evaporator core. The evaporator core is inside the car, so the condenser is obviously in front of the radiator uh, or in the front of the vehicle. The evaporator core is going to be inside the vehicle. Uh, or in a box that's going to be connected to the inside of the vehicle, depending on the year of the vehicle that you're working on. So, and then on the um, evaporator core, you're going to have another blower, another fan, okay, that we're going to have. That's going to have a wheel on it of some type, okay, to blow the air through this, okay? So, um, and then we're going to have some type of a dryer, an accumulator or a dryer. So uh, there's two different kinds of systems. I will draw them both. I'm going to start with a uh, an accumulator, okay? Or, or uh, yeah, I'm going to start with an accumulator. Uh, the only difference is going to be where they are in the system and the, and the expansion device. So let's start with an accumulator. I'm going to put it in. It's just going to be some type of a cylinder, okay? Uh, future videos, um, we're going to bring all these parts out. We're going to show you all these parts. We're going to show how they work, um, internal workings of them. But let's just call that the, the um, you know what, I'm trying, sorry. I know, I'm a little picky. We're going to draw this thing a little bit more like what it is. All right, there we go. That's going to be the accumulator. And then we're going to have an expansion device. So because we have an accumulator, we're going to have an orifice tube. So I'm just going to draw that. It's a little tiny tube, okay? That's what we're going to have, all right? That's our components. So on a system with an accumulator and an orifice tube, this is the components that are going to function, that are going to make this system work. Yeah, we've got a bunch of doors on the inside that control airflow and stuff like that. That's going to be a future video. We're going to cover it, I promise you, in depth. But right now, when we're working on the AC system outside in the engine compartment, this is what we're working on. This is, this is basically what we would call firewall forward, okay? I mean, obviously the evaporator core could be inside, but trust me on this. So I've got blue and red. Blue is gonna be low pressure. Red's gonna be the high pressure side, okay? So if we come out of the compressor, we're gonna come out with high pressure, okay? We're going to go into, do it like this. The condenser, okay? We're going to pressurize, go into the condenser. Then we're going to come out of the condenser. And 
go through our orifice and into the evaporator core, okay? Now I'm gonna make this just a little bit better here. And I'm actually gonna change one thing here. Bear with me, y'all. It will all make sense. Here's our orifice. Okay, that's our orifice tube on this type of system. Then we're gonna go into our evaporator core. I know I just turned it blue. I'll, I'll explain to you why in just a minute. A lot of you know why, but you know we're, we're trying to we're trying to build our foundations here. Okay. Then we're gonna come out, go into our dryer or into our accumulator. We're gonna come out of our accumulator. back into the compressor, right? That's our basic system. So now let's talk about what each component is doing and what is our refrigerant doing in each one of these areas, okay? So let's start with we're coming out of the compressor. So obviously when we come out of the compressor, we're, the compressor is a pump, okay? It's a little pump. And we're gonna show a compressor that's broken apart and, and that's all torn down and show you how it works and what it does internally. But for this right now, basic operating principles, think of it as a pump. So we're taking that refrigerant and we're pumping it out under high pressure, out of the compressor and into the condenser. Now, higher pressure equals higher temperature, okay? Pressure and temperature are always correlated with each other. The higher the pressure, the higher the temperature. So we've got high temperature, high pressure refrigerant coming out. We need to get it cooled down some, okay? We need to, it, it, we're trying to get the heat. What we've basically done is we've taken, I don't wanna get ahead of myself here. Let's just say that we need to get the heat out of it. We need to get the heat out of it, okay? It's got heat in it and we need to get it out. So we're gonna run it through our condenser, okay? So it's gonna run through this condenser and it's gonna cool off as it goes through because we're pulling air across that condenser Okay, we're pulling air across this condenser and we're taking the heat from the refrigerant and putting it into the air, okay? That's why it's important to make sure that the fins are good, there's no debris in front of the condenser, the cooling fan's working properly. Again, we're gonna get into all that in a future video, but for now we need to know we need to have the proper airflow going across that, okay? As the airflow comes across the condenser, I know I've got this line in front of it. I'm sorry, guys, we're doing the best we can here, but um, obviously this line wouldn't have the airflow going across it per se. It's not doing anything anyway. So we still come out, we still have high pressure. We still have high pressure, we still have high temperature, but we've taken the heat and we've moved it out in the atmosphere. We've lowered everything down just a little bit, okay? So we're pumping that, that refrigerant still going through this line and we come to our orifice tube. And an orifice tube, if we think about this, an orifice tube is just that. It's an orifice, it's tiny, okay? So we're gonna get into an expansion valve in just a minute, which is basically the same thing. Don't overthink this, okay? But the orifice tube, if we, if we put the refrigerant through it, for those of you that have replaced orifice tubes before, you know it's a, it's a little tube with a bunch of screen on it, okay? And that screen is just to keep debris out. If we cut that thing open and you look inside of it, you're gonna see a little brass looking little tube it's it about looks like if you cut a, a pen open and you, and you cut the pen apart, it almost looks like that. And that's what we're going to push all the refrigerant through, okay? So if I take refrigerant or I take a gas and I put it through an orifice, if I, if I, pressure, if I pressurize it and push it through an orifice, what's gonna happen when it comes out the other side? When it comes out the other side, it's going to expand. And when it expands, it's going to cool off, okay? So just as an example, if we took a tank, okay, of any gas, it doesn't matter. This is CO2, this is what we use to, for, to look for leaks in AC systems, but it doesn't matter. If I take this hose and I take this end of off, or I take this, even this adapter off, and I open this up, I've got pressurized gas, I'm shoving it through an orifice, and it's gonna come out, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be colder when it comes out, okay? so. That's how an AC system functions. That's how it gets cold, 
okay, is it runs the, it pressurizes the refrigerant through an orifice, and when it expands, it gets cold. That's why I've got it blue on the other side, okay? So it's going to, it's going to expand, come into the evaporator core, and this is all going to be cold, okay? What are we doing here? We're pushing the, the air inside the car or the fresh air coming from the outside, and we're pushing it across that evaporator core. Okay, so the same thing we did over here, we pushed outside air across the condenser to cool it off, to cool the condenser off. We're putting the, the heat from the condenser into the air, and we're doing the same thing here, but opposite. We're pushing the air across the evaporator core, but this is cold. So then what we're doing is we're taking the heat from the air and putting it in the, in the, in the evaporator core. I'm sorry, I don't know if I called that a condenser right there. Um, as this comes in, this evaporator core is cold. We're pushing air across it. We're taking the heat from the air and putting it in the evaporator core, putting it in the refrigerant in the evaporator core. Now, or the other way you can think about it is we're, we're running the air across the evaporator core and we're, we're getting the air cold, okay? We're taking that little evaporator core that's getting really, really cold. It's down in the 40s, um, low 50s, high 40s, mid 40 degree, all across this thing. And we're running that air across it. That air is gonna get cold, okay? And then we run that air through the vents, and that's how we get cold. So then we take that refrigerant, we run it back out, we run it through the accumulator, a dryer, okay? So this just keeps the refrigerant dry, okay? And it has got desiccant uh, bag, or desiccant bag in it. And if we ever buy a piece of electronics or anything really today, you see the little bags in there that says silica, don't eat it, okay? Well, this is basically I know there's chemical engineers that are gonna say, no, you're, you're off, okay? Basically, that's what's in here and it keeps it dry, okay? So we run it through that and then what are we doing? The, the, the compressor is pulling this back in. So it's pulling the refrigerant in, that's been cooled off, okay? That's cool, that's been cooled off, it's cool, but it now has some heat in it, okay? Because we've taken the heat, we have to move the heat. What we're doing is we're moving heat. We're taking the heat from the air that's inside the car and we're moving it to the air that's outside the car. We're taking the heat from the air that's inside the car, we're moving it into the refrigerant, and we're taking that heat and we're moving it to the air outside the vehicle. That's how an AC system functions, okay? And I don't really care if it's an AC system in a car or even the one in your house, okay? That big unit outside, that's a condenser and your compressor and everything's in that. In this case, we've got the compressor with the condenser here, okay? It all works the same way in basic principle. We're moving heat. So now, how do we, you know, what are our, what are these components? Uh, what are the possibilities? Before we get into that, actually, let me switch over to a more common one that we see today. So this is very common on a lot of your older vehicles. This is what we had. A lot of your older domestic vehicles. This is what we had. Not all of them, but we definitely had a lot of them. Uh, today, I think the vast majority of the ones that we see anyway are uh, the system I'm about to show you with a dryer and an expansion valve. The, the, the principle is exactly the same. It doesn't do, it's not working anything different. It's just, we're just taking heat and moving it. So let's go to that. So now I'm just gonna take the orifice tube. And I'm gonna take the accumulator out. Okay. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna come out of that evaporator core and go straight to the compressor. and we have an expansion valve. Now, I know the, the expansion valve is gonna have your in and your out in the same block, okay? So let me draw it like that, let me draw it like that. Well, no, because there are some vehicles that don't have it like that. The, if it has an expansion block, it's gonna be in and out, but if it has an expansion valve, some vehicles still have that. Uh, it's just gonna have it going in. I don't wanna overcomplicate it. Let's just back up 30 seconds here and go, okay. Let's just put an expansion valve in here, okay? The expansion valve is gonna do exactly the same thing that an orifice did. The expansion valve is just a valve with a small orifice in it, and it's usually got some type of a control mechanism uh, that maybe it has a uh, tube that comes off of it that goes here. It may not have that. That may be all automatic. It's got some type of way of regulating that expansion 
uh, that orifice. So it can now move the orifice, open it and close it just a little bit, okay? Don't overcomplicate it. It does exactly the same thing. It's just an orifice that the, that the pressurized refrigerant's being pushed through and it expands when it comes out the other side. That's all it is. Okay, so let's not overcomplicate it. Let's keep it simple. Now, the other thing that's gonna be different is on a system with a expansion valve, you're not gonna have an accumulator on the low side line. You're going to have the, a dryer on the high side. So let's go ahead and put a dryer in here. Okay, that a lot of dryers today are built onto the condensers or they're close to the condenser, but they're always gonna be in the high side line. So all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take a, I'm just gonna put a dryer right here, we've all seen them, and we're just gonna take that line. So this is in, okay, we're going in, and then we go out, okay? It is doing exactly the same thing. It's just keeping the refrigerant, you know, taking the moisture and keeping the moisture out of the refrigerant, okay? So um, my understanding of this has always been and how I always think about it is two things happen with air conditioning. We're, we're cooling off the air and we're also drying the air. Now, uh, you guys out there, maybe you could tell me if I'm wrong, but I was always taught that the refrigerant, as it picks up that heat, it always picks up some of that moisture too and we're depositing that moisture in the dryer. You guys tell me if I'm wrong there, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, I just need to know how this functions. Again, this dryer is gonna be full of a desiccant bag. It's gonna have a bunch of, these things, sometimes those bags can break on these dryers, they can get in the system. We're not gonna get over that today, I'm just gonna tell you it can happen. Uh, sometimes the desiccant bags are replaceable in the um, dryer on these systems. You can actually unscrew them and put the, take the old bag out and put a new bag in. Again. Doesn't matter for what we're doing today. We are working on the basics of the system. So this is doing exactly the same thing. We have high pressure out of the compressor, going into the condenser, airflow across the condenser. We're coming out, we're going into a dryer, we're coming out of the dryer, into the expansion valve. And think about that word, All right? Before we had an orifice tube, now we have an expansion valve. What's gonna happen as we push the refrigerant into the expansion valve, it's going to expand when it comes out the other side, it's going to get cold. So for those of you that work on some older vehicles, we've got an old um, 85 or 86 Ford in here. You know, the orifice tube on that vehicle was about that far away from the evaporator core, right? Well, what do we see on modern cars? Modern cars, the expansion valve is right by the evaporator core, very close because we, want, we don't want any space here. We want that cold refrigerant as it expands to be right in that evaporator core so it can then take the heat from the air, move it more efficiently because it's actually not losing that um, ability or not getting warmer, taking heat from the engine compartment, places like that. I'm hoping that makes sense to everybody. When we look at on a car, on our next video, we'll be working in the car, you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? But you gotta get the basics down first. So when we're gonna to get to a car, you know, and, and looking at these systems, there are some certain basic fundamental temperatures that we can hold true on pretty much across the board. And these are gonna be some readings that we take. And some of them we're able to take, uh, one of them we're always able to take on every car, and one of them we're not. But when we're looking for things like blockages, when we're looking for things like, hey, does that, is that condenser working? Is, there, is it blocked up or is the fan working right? I see it's running, but is it moving enough air? You know, if it's a clutch fan, but the AC is not going good, my high side pressure is too high, okay? What am I looking for? I got high side pressure high. I got, you know, low side pressure is, is high. What's wrong there? I got high side pressure low. I got low side pressure high. What's wrong there, okay? These are the things that we're gonna get into. We're going to get into those. We're gonna give you the thing so, so you can, Download these videos or bookmark these videos or whatever so that you can come back to them later when you're actually working on a car and you can look at it. So in the next few videos, we're gonna have those, those numbers. But right now, let's go over some temperature checks and you'll see how these things work. Um, and these are temperature checks that, we're, that we do on almost every vehicle that comes in here. If One of them we always do and then another one if we can. So we always have a line going into the condenser and a line coming out of the condenser. 
So let's call it, that's just right here and right here. We're going to put a temperature gauge, a clamp right here, okay? Wire, temperature gauge right here, wire, and we're going to have a meter. And it's going to take a reading across these two, okay? And we're going to have two readings. One's going to be this clamp, and one's going to be this clamp. What you want to see there is a 20 to 50 degree difference, Fahrenheit. Everything's Fahrenheit. A 20 to 50 degree difference in these two going across. Remember those numbers. If you're taking notes, write that down because that's something that's going to hold true on almost every vehicle that you work on. 20 to 50 degrees in there is going to be where you're at on your temperature across there. Why? Why is it going to be a difference going in and coming out, right? Well, going in, we had high pressure from the compressor. We had the heat that was in the refrigerant coming from the evaporator core. It was highly pressurized, went in, it was hot. The condenser is there to do what? Take the heat and move it into the air. So we had air going across it, fans working. We put in, let's just say we put in 160 degrees going in, okay? And coming out, we had 130 degrees, okay? Well, where did the 30 degrees go? We cooled it off. We've taken that heat and we've moved it where? Into the air. That's what we're trying to do. So if we've got 20 to 50 degrees across this condenser, a drop, okay, of 20 to 50 degrees across that condenser, we know that that condenser is functioning. We know that that fan's working, okay? We know there's no blockages there. We know there's no blockages in the front of it. We don't have a bunch of debris, you know, straw. I don't know, depending on where everybody lives, you know, dirt and whatever. We don't have any blockages there, okay? This is functioning if we've got this temperature, okay? So that's the first check that we always do. We always are going to do this test. We do this test when a car comes in and we're doing our, our performance test. This is our test that we do. The second one is one that we can't always do. If we have an orifice tube, we can do it. If we have an expansion valve, we generally can't do it because we can't get to it. But what we're going to do on this one is we're going to take a clamp and we're going to put it after the expansion device. So if it's an orifice tube, we're going to put it after, okay? And then we're going to put it on the line coming out, okay? And we're going to... We just use the same, the same uh, gauge. And on this one, we're looking for a five degree difference. A five degree difference. We don't want a ton of difference across here. We want this thing to be able to flow through here, take the heat out, but not drop the, the temperature. I don't want to make the temperature be really, really different. Because if the temperature is, let's say we've got a 20 degree difference there. Well, if we've got a 20 degree difference there, that means we, we did not have the available either pressure or the amount of refrigerant to take the heat out without it making that refrigerant much warmer than it needed to be. So this was a test that we used to do way back in the day when we were doing conversions from R12 um, refrigerant to 134 refrigerant and everybody was trying to figure out how much should you put in and there were all different kind of numbers out there, 80%, 100%, who knew. We would do this, we would just go across this and a lot of these vehicles that we were working on back then, um, we, could, we could get to these and we would just, look, we would just, we would just keep messing with the, with the refrigerant level, letting it equalize out until we got that. Once we had that, we knew we were full, okay? We had the right amount. So these are some basic temperature readings that you can get on, this you can get on every single vehicle that you work on, okay? And then we're gonna go over our pressures Okay, in the next video, we're going to go over our pressures, what they mean, what, you, what devices and what components are you looking for, okay, when, you, when your pressures are doing different things. We're going to go over what happens when our temperature differences are not correct, okay, what are we looking for there. Some of you have already guessed some of the things, I'm sure. Um, and we're going to go over how does a compressor actually function. What does this thing do? What does this look like inside, okay? Because again, if we know what it looks like inside and we know how it works, then, then we can fix it. And there are several different, I mean, there's lots of different types of compressors, but what are we working on today? We're working on the type that just have a clutch on it that just on off. Then we work on a type that has variable control. So the, the, the plate inside, and we'll see one, the plate inside moves to give us a variable displacement or a variable amount of pressure that we can put in and out. 
Um, and then we have some that have a clutch and a variable displacement, okay? So, um, and those can catch you if you think you're working on one, if you see a clutch on it and then you don't realize it's variable, boy, I tell you what, you can go down a rabbit hole because you're looking at pressures that don't look right to you. So uh, we're gonna get into that in the next one, but this is the basics of how an AC system functions. Again, real quick recap, pressurizes the refrigerant, goes through the condenser, cools the refrigerant off, comes out of the condenser, still high pressure, still high temperature, but a little lower, comes out into the orifice or the expansion valve, whatever expansion device there is, so an orifice tube or an expansion valve, it expands, it gets cold, it goes into the evaporator core, it gets the evaporator core cold, and then it comes, it, air blows across it, we take that air and that's what we use to cool ourselves with, and then we come back out, we, the compressor pulls it back in, and we start all over again, okay? That's the basics of an AC system, all right? So, uh, again, we're going to go over some more intricacies of it, some deeper into it in the next video. We're going to get on some cars. We're going to do some live testing. We're going to see the inside of a compressor. So be looking for that one. Give us a thumbs up. You know, notification bell. Hit that thing so that when we release this next video on these, you're notified. Save this video, okay? And, um, and definitely subscribe. So hope it helped, and we'll see you in the next one.